guys, my name is Lisa. Um, we're going to do a repeating spiral tie-dye today. It will probably be the most realistic tutorial you're going to have because it most likely will have my dishwasher in the background and my kids running around, so uh, be prepared for that. Um, so right now we have the fabric. It's just This is just an Osnaberg, um wrap that I did myself and it has been sitting in a uh, alkaline solution for probably about two hours at this point. Um, you can use you can actually get the soda ash if you want. Um, what I just use is a product called PH Up, which uh, is used for like pool care. You can get it in like Walmart in your pool care section. Uh, it just brings the alkalinity of the um, the fabric up, which helps the uh, fiber reactive dyes work a little bit better and keeps the color a little bit more bold. So we're gonna get started. Okay, so I have saran wrap to my table to protect the surface, um, which is a lot of fun to wrap up. Um, we are working with a basic solution, so although it doesn't burn your skin the same way as like an acidic solution would, you should still wear gloves when you're um, doing the hands-on because it's still not good for your skin. Um, we're going to do start with a spiral, so you kind of get like a section of the fabric about the size. You're going to just pinch the middle, bring it up a little bit, and then all you do is twist and twist. You can see the spiral forming here. <laughs> That's my uh, almost four year old. So I have a nice little ball here, and this is where I'm going to um, tie it off. So you need three pieces. I use um, just like basic jewelry making hemp because it's pretty cheap and it's durable and it works, and I had it on hand, so I used it. This gets a little bit tricky with the rubber, though. So <laughs> yes, baby. Wow, is it a pirate treasure? Oh, you should look. There's nothing in it! Oh no, did Captain Hook steal the treasure? I guess they only gave the <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Aren't I blessed? <laughs> My lovely mother is uh, helping me with the camera work too, so thank you, Mama. <laughs> Oh, the gloves are getting in the way. Yeah? <laughs> and that's my 14 month old over there. I'm trying to be good to use lunch. I think I cut this one short. Oh, no. Can you stop it? No. Okay. Mama. Micah. <laughs> there we go. Mama. Micah. Can you explain how you just the size? <laughs> okay. So now you've got, it's basically cut like a pie. So you're, you have six pieces. Try to do them as equal as you can. So you might have to like maneuver it around a little bit. Um, kind of like that. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six quadrants here. And then you're just going to repeat it on the next thing. Okay, so stop for keep that. Well, I'll do the, the spin, but then I'll have okay. you cut it off before I start tying. Okay. so that it's like pretty much right next to this one and then I'm going to tie it off again. So we'll go ahead and cut it off here and come back when it's all done. Okay, so we're back. Uh, the whole thing has been tied off. Um, something to note is uh, you don't have to do it like super duper tight. You just need it tight enough so the spiral is going to stay in place. Uh, the purpose of the string, obviously, I mean besides keeping the spiral in place, is more just to um, give you the sections that you need so that you know where to apply the dye. So um, I'm using Dylon dye. I mixed it uh, according to the instructions, I did about probably about 20 ounces of water, uh, warm water to it, and I put it in this nifty little uh, hair dye bottle from Sally's that I had to duct tape on the top because my fur baby chewed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if 
fun that way. Um, basically, I'm going to do a three color one on this particular tie-dye. It's going to be this uh, Bahama blue. It's going to be purple and it's also going to have pink in it. So basically, I'm, once I apply it, I'm going to do it on opposite ends. So each color will be on opposite ends of each other so it makes a, a decent spiral. Um, you go ahead and apply it directly to it. And be, don't be afraid to like stick the nozzle in there and get it in there. And if it goes into the next section, like I freaked out the first time I did it, it's actually not that big of a deal. You don't even notice. Um, and then you're going to have to flip it over and do the other side. That's it. And then the other side. Um, if you like a lot of negative space, which is like the blank pieces in between your tie-dye, um, you don't want to use as much. If you really don't like the negative space, you don't like the white bits in there, then try and saturate the fabric as much as possible. One suggestion might even be um, to use like a slightly lighter color, like say like on the blue one that I showed you at the beginning. If you um, don't want any white on it whatsoever, I would dye the whole thing like a really light shade of blue and then do different shades of blue for your tie-dye so your negative spaces will still be a different color of blue as opposed to just being the plain fabric that was already there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all dyed up and then I'll show you what it looks like and then it's going to sit for a really long time so uh, I'll probably be wearing different clothes. <laughs> okay so our first color is on which was the Bahama blue. Now I'm doing intense violet. And same thing, I'm doing opposite ends. Now I have a question. Oh, if, you, if you wanted more colors, would you step, do you use another string to separate to do? Um, I don't, I think I would, instead of, uh, I'd either do two colors, three colors, or six different colors is probably what I would end up doing because I like it to be even. Um, you probably could split it into eight. I don't know how that would turn out though because I've never done it. Right. Okay. <laughs> but you can try it. So got the excess dye. And you want to use like coordinating colors if possible unless you're really good at tie dyeing because if you tried to do like a red and a green, it's it green would turn, yeah, it would turn brown and stuff. So make sure you know like your color mixing rules and that kind of stuff. Alright, I'm going to finish up with the purple and then next we'll be doing pink. Go. I bet we can't find you. Um, the last color is pink, so we're going to kind of fill in any spot that's white. This is a really pale pink. Alina's playing hide and seek. Yeah, my daughter's playing <laughs> hide and seek, and we're not really playing along, so <laughs> she's not having so much fun. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this into the rest of the fabric, and it will be done. And then let's see it. Mm -hmm, that it's set overnight, bas uh, bas at this point. I mean, it, the directions on the last one said like six to eight hours. Alina said six to eight hours, but um, I'm going to let this one sit a little bit longer and see how it does. Okay. Bye-bye. So all of our colors are set on here now. Um, it's going to have to sit and you want to keep it moist. Um, so that's going to help the, the fabric set really good with the colors. I'm going to transfer it to my daughter's Tinkerbell bucket. <laughs> Buckets are handy. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> um, and I ran out of saran wrap doing my paper or my table, so this is going to <laughs> function just fine. And now it is going to sit overnight, and I'm going to wash it in the morning and try it out. And then send it to my beautiful March Mama friend. Her name is Brenda, and this is going to be for her daughter, Chandador Cupcake. Oh! <laughs> Good morning. It's uh, pretty much first thing in the morning, so I have to set up a little tripod to put the spark because I don't want to wake my mom up. Um, but this is set overnight. It's looking pretty good still. So uh, basically I'm just going to go ahead and cut all of these ties off and throw it in the wash. I'm going to do a cold rinse first, and then I will do a warm wash with just a little bit of detergent, and then it's going to go in the dryer. So the next time you see me, um, hopefully I'll be dressed for the day. and. I will have it coming out of the jar. What's the thing? It's the new wrap. Alita, say hi. Hi. 
Hi. And Lena's going to help me get out the finished product from the dryer. And that's Splinter. The one that chewed up my little bottle that I was using earlier. So, go ahead, Alina. Can you open the dryer for me? Yeah. Maybe? Oh! Oh, you did it before I even got there. What do you think? Wow. How did it turn out, kid? <coughs> it turned out good. Hey, Trouble. Hi. It turned out really good? Yeah. What colors are there? There's purple, blue, and white. Okay, <coughs> say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, I just wanted to show off the finished product here. Um, the pink, for some reason, did not turn out the way I anticipated. It looked really, really light when I was mixing it, um, but I still like the overall finish of it. So you can kind of see the pink. It's not quite as vibrant as I was thinking in my head, but I still really do like the finished product. Um, this is about a size 6. Ignore my like, laundry and random toys the kids have shown around the living room, please. Um, so this wrap is going to be shipped off to the lovely Brenda and her Miss Chunkador Cupcake. I hope you'd enjoy it, Brenda.